Also, I went garbage picking. Lo and behold, another lawnmower followed me back. This one's another Bolins. I think this is, I want to say the third one of these that I've actually, you know, fixed up and gotten running. Funny thing about this one, when I uh, got it back to the house last night, I pushed the primer bulb in a few times and it does function, as you guys can see. So I pressed the primer bulb a few times at the house, pulled the cord a few times, nothing happened. And uh, it's kind of interesting because it's got a manual throttle control and uh, it's not actually hooked up to anything on the handle and there's no sort of evidence of the controls being there. So what I'm probably going to do is just go ahead and lock it down right here. You know, it should be good to go after that. But this thing actually still runs. I did have to start it just now with some starting fluid and uh, I just did that just to verify that it still had spark, which it does. And it seems to run fine. Um, aside from starting cold, it doesn't like to do. So I know these things, these diaphragms like to go out all the time. So I have in my consumables bin here, a couple new diaphragms, which we'll go ahead and install. And a brand new primer bulb, we'll install that as well. It looks like this thing has uh, been serviced before at one point. I don't know when exactly. And uh, by the state of the air filter, it definitely has been a while since that was serviced. However, top of it looks really good. And this is really bad to run a lawnmower like that. It doesn't appear that there's any oil in it, so it might have all leaked out over time. This might be the original air filter, I don't know. But surely that's actually kind of a good thing when it gums up with mud like that if the user doesn't service this with oil because that starts to act like a uh, particle filter believe it or not. You're honestly supposed to service these with oil and I'll go ahead and do that and clean this thing off at the end of this video. Very simple to do. First thing I'm going to do once I get it off is uh, drain all the old gas out of it. It could be where some of the issues coming from. But very simple to remove these tanks. As you can see we'll have to remove this metal linkage as well as these two springs. And then you have a half inch bolt right here and a 3 8 inch bolt right there. So we'll go ahead and remove those and get on with it. So to go ahead and start removing this thing, I like to use a drill on this type of stuff because I'm lazy. And then we'll go ahead and throw it on full and break the seal. Break the seal, remove the bolt. I'm now going to very carefully remove these springs and linkages. Sometimes you can kind of get lucky moving these around, but just go ahead and do that. So now we'll go ahead and remove the carburetor. There's five bolts that hold it on. Five screws, rather. So we'll go ahead and pop the carburetor off, like so. And we'll just set that aside. Now I'm going to go ahead and dump the tank and clean that out. So when you service these things, it's always good to give them a quick spray off, make sure they're clean. Remove your screen here. You can inspect it if you want, but usually they're not too dirty. Now here is your diaphragm. We'll set that aside. And we have another small spring. We'll set that aside as well. Now we see the underside of the carburetor. And so the best way to clean out carburetors is most of the time just use a short, quick squirt. And that's actually coming out of the front there. And then go ahead and spray out the screen and give the underside a few quick squirts. So there you have it. Now it's nice and clean. And so with the mounting surface of the gas tank nice and clean, next part you do is grab your new diaphragm and make sure you don't lose the spring and screen. We'll go ahead and install those right now. Here's the carburetor. Spring goes right here. The screen, just install it right here. So now you're not going to lose them. Now when you go and install one of these, the flat side is the part that goes on the mating surface of the gas tank. So we'll go ahead and install that first. And then your ribbed side, we'll call it, you install directly on top. And sometimes I even like to 
put one, put a screw on the outer edge and kind of start that one first. But put your pickup tube in and then try and line it up as best as you can. Then grab the bottom gasket, line that one up as best you can. It's kind of a pain in the ass, like I told you guys. And then with your head looking over, you can see if all of the holes are lined up and it appears that they are. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick the screws in. You can manually go over them now with a regular Phillips head screwdriver. And just give them a little bit more of a turn just to kind of snug them down. These don't need to be down super tight. So now the diaphragm's been replaced and we can move on to the primer bulb. And sometimes you'll need to break the primer bulb to get it out all the way. Just peel it out at that point and uh, get a flat blade screwdriver, poke it in the sides and then finish off with grabbing it like that. So now I'm going to shoot a bunch of carbs brand to here and uh, clean that out. So now we'll grab our new primer bulb. Kind of line it up. And a 5 8 deep socket works best. Just push it back down and into place. So now the primer bulb's in place. Make sure both the, both the sides are poking out a little bit. I'll go ahead and do that. And uh, make sure it works properly. So now we're at the point where we can reinstall the tank on the lawnmower. And again, it's pretty much the reverse of what we did before. I'm going to go ahead and throw this PCV line back on and I'll go ahead and clean it off just a little bit like I'm doing right now. And small side goes on the part coming out of the motor. And this is going to reattach back onto the carburetor, but we'll worry about that in a minute. What we need to do now is go ahead and stick this linkage back in and stick it all back on the lawnmower. So there you have it. Now just to throw those two bolts back in and uh, I'll show you guys how to service the air filter. So now when you service these air filters, don't let the dirtiness throw you off. It's actually just doing what it's supposed to do. And as I mentioned earlier, these things actually function quite a bit better if they're not oiled and they get dirty like this. So how you service them, is just go ahead and scrape it off a little bit. And that's probably good enough for government work. Now what you want to service it with is really any old motor oil. This is a jug of mixed brand 5W30 non-synthetic oil. It doesn't really matter what you use, it all does the same thing in this instance. With the filter in one hand and the oil in the other, I just dump a little bit and then I kind of squish it all together. You want, you want it to get as much, as the oil, much of the oil as possible. I'm not really liking how this one's all kind of contorted like that on the side, but it's still good. Don't let that throw you off either. And now with the filter all oily, you're good to go. That's what you want to do with these when you service them. Do you never, never put them in dry. If you put these in dry, you might as well be running this engine with no filter on it at all. Because what ends up happening is all the dust and particles that are actually dry they get sucked in with the air, goes straight into your cylinder. It might not happen the next day or it might not happen the next week or the next time you use it, but eventually what's going to happen is all that shit is getting into the inside of your cylinder and it's going to wear your rings out. You always want to service these things if they're dry. And just for posterity, I'll go ahead and clean this off as well before I reinstall anything onto it. And to reinstall, all you do is grab your little gasket here Set that on your carburetor and grab your air filter box I see a lot on these mowers that I pick up that people really tighten these air hats down on like with a significant amount of force you only need to snug them up just a little bit they don't need to be wrenched on there so the screw is starting to go through the air hat. You don't want to do that. 
So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is, since there's no gas in it, and it's a little easier to do with, uh, without gas in it, I'll go ahead and throw some new oil in it because the stuff in it right now is black. I'll do that off camera. So if anybody's curious the type of oil I use in lawnmowers, Rotella T1, straight grade, 30 weight. Yes, it is definitely overkill for a lawnmower, but it exceeds the requirements set by the manufacturer. And it's also a cheaper oil than buying the Briggs & Stratton branded 30 weight or any other 30 weight for that matter. It's 10 bucks for a jug. You can't beat that. So now let's go ahead and give it a few primes and see if she'll give us a start. It has brand new oil in it, brand new gas. As you guys can see and hear, it runs perfect. So now I'm going to go ahead and give it a nice good cleaning with the pressure washer. And it's important before you wash your lawnmower, as you can see this one has a vented gas cap on it, you want to cover up those holes before you shoot some water at it. So this lawnmower is freshly serviced, ready to go, nice and cleaned off. I like using these uh, clamps here to hold the handle down. So I run these things for 20-30 minutes and then come back and restart them to make sure everything's good to go. Go ahead and pull that off. Give it a few primes, make sure that's all the way there. Still need to lock that down. I'm happy with that. It's going to make a really nice lawnmower for somebody. Won't be able to get as much for it as I will that one, but it'll still sell really quickly, especially this time of the year. I'm not able to hold on to lawnmowers longer than about 12 or 24 hours until they're out of my hands. They go quick right now. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've been trying to get you guys a lot more lawnmower videos and, uh, if you like this one, subscribe. I've always got more on the way. And uh, you all stay classy. Stay tuned for more.